Hello guys, in this video we will be talking about semic gene. Now semic gene is a very very important gene which controls the expression of almost 15% of all genes that are present in our body. So it's a very very necessary regulatory gene which produces a regulatory protein which can modify the expression of other genes that are present in our body. Right? In one word, if you, you want to say in one sentence actually, is that semic produces a protein which is also called semic or different varieties of mic, n mic or different varieties of mic. Those mic proteins, they are nuclear phosphorylating proteins. That means they can phosphorylate certain molecules inside the nucleus and they can act as a transcription factor itself and also they can increase the secretion or, or, or the production of transcription factors in nucleus which can ultimately produce lot of different varieties of protein inside the cell. Now if the semi creates certain problems and if it becomes hyperactivated, imagine how many proteins will be produced extra inside the cell and that can lead to definitely proliferation of cell, growth of the cell and ultimately can lead to cancer. So semic is related with cancer pathway because ultimately the major genes that are regulated by semic are mostly required for cell cycle, cell proliferation and cell division. So ultimately problems with semic can result in cancer. So that's why we are studying this protein even with more interest. Okay. So semic is a gene that is present in chromosome number 8, right? That's a that's a simple fact. And once it is transcribed and then translated, the protein is there it can act inside the nucleus directly. So if I draw it here, it can act there directly. That means uh, if this is the nucleus, DNA is there. So semic, let's take a different color. Let's say semic is here. That semic can go and sit on to certain different types of gene promoters there. They can sit in different parts type of genes and semic have two different types of functions actually that's the regulation of expression that's an important function right so and also it can act as the transcription factor directly so the regulation of expression can be brought about majorly by two different way one is as a transcription factor which can directly sit uh, to the promoter and can transcribe certain genes or it can also act as a uh, histone modifier histone modifier and if we talk about histone modifier that means it's also acting as a nucleosome modifier and we know that dna is wrapped around histones right so if you want to access a particular stretch of the dna a particular stretch of the dna which is a gene in that case we need to unwrap that dna from the histones and for that we need certain type of chemical signaling to be reached to histones. One type of signaling is acetyltransferase. So transfer of acetyl group to that histone. So if you add the acetyl group to the histone, the DNA will start unwrapped and then the DNA will become accessible for the transcription. Right? And this semic protein exactly achieved that task. Semic acts as and semic recruits an enzyme called HAT histone acetyl transferase. Now this histone acetyl transferase what it does actually let's 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 talk about histones a little bit. Let's say this is it. Let's say this is it. So these are histones and this is the DNA molecule that are wrapped around the histone. Now the thing is once we add acetyl group here in histone let's say these are the acetyl groups that we add right due to the presence of this semic obviously recruit those acetyl groups after that what will happen here is that DNA will become free and histones will separate so DNA is now become accessible so let me draw double stranded DNA here there is also a double strand here. Okay. So now DNA is free and the promoter for the DNA is free. Let's say our gene of interest in the DNA is from this particular stretch. 
this is the promoter this is our gene of interest and it's become free for the transcription so you can transcribe it and then transfer it into proteins right so it controls the expression of 15 percent of the genes in our body so that's a very important task so this is about the functionality of simic now if we talk about a little bit about the structure i won't prefer to talk about structures more because the protein structures are complicated you don't need to memorize or mug of all these structures but the thing is Simic has uh, two different uh, zones, I mean, two, two different types of domains. One is the helix loop helix domain. That is, so if I draw, one is if structure helix loop helix domain, HLHD or helix loop helix domain. And it is attached with another domain which is, which is a leucine zipper domain. These are the different types of domain structures. If you want to know the domain structure, what is leucine zipper, what, what is a helix loop helix and all this type of domain. Helix loop helix means there are alpha helical structures as a secondary structure of a protein. Loop is also a secondary structure. So they are having a alpha helix then slight loop. So kind of structures like, like this then a loop then another alpha helix like this. Okay, similarly for the leucine zipper, it's a kind of different zip like structure which is also made up with many alpha helices wrapped around one another. So you can you can just search for these videos in YouTube. You can also find a video on this loop structure and tertiary structure, secondary structure in my YouTube channel also. So you can watch that. But the thing is, these two different structures, these two different structural domains are very important. Why? Because this leucine zipper domain can bind with another protein called max okay on the other hand this helix loop helix domain is important to bind with the dna because you know if this is acting as a transcription factor it definitely needs to be interacting with the dna for that it requires the dna binding domain and that domain is helix loop helix domain on the other hand the leucine zipper will help it to be attached with its partner, a protein called Max. Okay, so usually once CMIC is present itself, it can trigger certain type of functions in cell. But when the CMIC attached with Max, in that case, it will bring more signaling system inside the cell, or it can trigger more of the signaling pathways inside the cell. One of such pathway. I'm drawing here is that we have this I know if there's a color uh, I mean the light reflection here but still I'm going to draw it let's say the CMIC is here this is the portion of CMIC and let's draw a portion of max let's say this is a portion of max if we attach those two things what they can do actually this complex of CMIC and max can release a particular transcription factor called E2F called E2F. Once E2F is released, this can produce more and more different proteins during the cell cycle, which ultimately heads in cell proliferation and growth. Right? Usually this E2F is blocked by another protein called PRB or RB, let's say this is the RB or retinoblastoma protein or PRB, E2F is there, it was inactivated by the attachment of PRB. Now once E2F is released from here and in that case it can trigger certain things like cell proliferation and growth and all these things. So if you imagine, if CMIC gets activated, right, what will happen? If CMIC gets activated, hyperactivated, not in normal condition, because in normal condition it will bring all this uh, regulation of uh, cell cycle and all these things. But if CMIC gets hyperactivated, It will turn on many transcription factors which will ultimately start synthesizing enzymes and proteins which are necessary for rapid cell division and growth and cell proliferation which will ultimately lead to cancer and malignancy. 
right so that's the story about simic here okay and i hope that you like this video if you like this video hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel so that i can keep on delivering this lectures to you thank you